irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Peace Fund Radio with Ethan Denmeyer and Adrian Paul. Right here on LA Talk Radio. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, this mic is very low this morning. It's probably from the girls that were in the studio before me. Do you think they're lower than me? I'd, I'd take that a different way. Anyway, um, Ethan, uh, Ethan's shaking his head at that comment. Why are you shaking your head while you're doing your Twitter or Instagram on the other, on the uh, other one there? It's actually, I'm, I'm texting one of our affiliates. Affiliates? Uh, we have affiliates? We do. Where are, where are our affiliates? Uh, this one is in Philadelphia, actually. Actually, no see. comment yet on uh, your hilarious stylings before the show, but I'm sure we'll get some. Sorry, what was that? What? what, what, what? Hold on, I got to concentrate on this. He's concentrating. I'm sorry, everybody, but this morning we have a show that's going to be packed with different types of um, conversations from around the world, actually, and we will be around the world. We uh, joined in South Africa this morning in uh, an undisclosed location by John Bailey, who's you know. Oh, on it? deck. Oh, Where he's on right? deck. There he is. He's, he's in the background there. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, we'll also be joined by one of our Heroes of the Week, who's in another undisclosed location this morning, but we'll find out where she's come up calling in from. How are you doing this morning, John? I'm doing very well, guys. How are you? Oh, we're doing pretty good this morning. Pretty so, good. That's the good. weather's changing. That's good. It's getting warm. I went in and did a little bit of a yoga stretch this morning in the park. Which Good was interesting. They was actually doing. They were doing a movie there. They took over the entire park. What park were you at? Um, I can't remember. It was was the movie Die Hard in a Hospital? It, probably. I was dying very hard in the hospital this morning. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, we're um, anyway. Uh, this morning we're going to show. We, obviously, we have we talk about a lot of different things on um, on Peace Farm Radio. We've not ever talked about something which is. Uh, which it has a very large impact in many countries across the world, and that's malaria. Um, we're going to be talking about. Um, I brought in a, uh, a an esteemed colleague today, and we're going to call him esteemed colleague because I've known him for thirty years. Uh, we've never worked together, but we've always done a lot of stuff together. We actually originally lived together. That's David Stern. Morning, David. Morning. And I, I, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase that. Live together bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching you, listening to you get further and further, get into deeper into it. Yes. Come on. Uh, yeah. Well, a, a serial entrepreneur. We're going to call David this morning. Um, you he actively st- develops startups and introduces brands to investors as an equity partner and manager. This past year, he established Booty North America, which is actually where I saw you at the um, Expo uh, West. Expo West, yeah. Which was uh, how did that go for you? Did, did- it was fantastic. The product's been incredibly well received, and it's right in the trend of organic, eco-friendly uh, apparel. So it's organic bamboo eco wear, right? Yep. Yeah, you, you distributed. You're distributing over twenty two hundred healthy retail outlets in the U.S. I understand. We are, also. and that's in the Look first year, so that's fantastic. That's actually pretty good. But you're also what's very really also you also co-founded uh, Sonos. Sonios. Sonios. Could you, could you repeat that? Sonios Social Capital. Okay, and uh, we're dedicated to um, providing entrepreneurial. Um, you know, opportunities for Africa and Africans and to bring a new sort of vision of what Africa is about to the world. Um, you know, people think about illness and uh, poverty in Africa, but there's also an incredibly vibrant and creative entrepreneurial um, environment happening in Africa. And we want to showcase the positive aspects of what can be in Africa and who people can work with and collaborate with in Africa. But you also worked on, you're also the co-founder of uh, Goodbye Malaria. Yeah, so well. Goodbye Malaria is the first um, initiative under the Sonia Social Capital um, umbrella. And Goodbye Malaria is dedicated to eradicating malaria in Africa as a sort of a big vision. And we've started in southern Mozambique. We started a couple of years ago and we protected 100,000 people in our first round of spraying. And this year, we're going to protect over 300,000 uh, people and households in southern Mozambique as we expand our initiative on the ground. 
For those of you that don't understand what the, the issue is out, malaria is one of the most common infectious diseases and a great public health problem worldwide, particularly in Africa and Southeast and South Asia. It's caused by a microscopic parasite transmitted to people through the bites of infected mosquitoes. Now, I'm also going to throw a little challenge out to any of you out there that want to send it out on our Facebook, on our Twitter uh, feed. Interesting factoid. Where does the word malaria come from? I'll mention that in a second. Anyway, let's. Uh, you can answer that on our uh, on our Twitter feeds. Just uh, send it in, and, see, and, and I'll I might give you a shout out if you get the get the answer right. Um, malaria is the third biggest killer of children globally, which is obviously why we're very interested in it. Yet the disease is a hundred percent preventable and treatable, making all malaria deaths unacceptable. Currently, about 3.2 billion people, almost half of the world's population, are at risk, with children under five accounting for more than two-thirds of all deaths associated with the disease. Isn't that an amazing number? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. When we huge, think about it, it's just huge. And if you think about the fact that there are that many millions of people who are in danger of contracting malaria, when you look at almost 215 million cases, diagnosed cases of malaria a year, just think about the lines at the, your doctor's office and your hospital – and you can imagine a hospital in the middle of Africa, which doesn't have the services and the amount of doctors, having to deal with malaria patients who make their way into hospitals and how that detracts and impacts these hospitals from them treating other people as well. All right. So let me ask you a question. What, what, why Africa? Why Mozambique? Um, what was, what was, and what was your connection to it? So um, my connection is through the visionary founder of a huge uh, restaurant chain called Nando's, which uh, for those of you in the U.S. that don't know it, there are over 1,300 of these restaurants. And Robbie is a, Robbie Brosen is his name, is a dedicated entrepreneur who believes deeply in Africa. And um, he, he became aware of the economic impact that malaria has and how it keeps people in poverty and wanted to do something about it. So he created um, Goodbye Malaria as a means to eradicating malaria and uplifting people. And I got involved in, in the U.S. Um, awareness building as part of uh, Goodbye Malaria on the ground in Africa. And uh, so that's my, my involvement with it. And, uh, you know, we seek to, to build awareness and to, to um, provide funding to our on the ground teams of people who are every day going into people's homes and and spraying and providing protection from um, this horrible disease. Let's let's talk a little bit about because you you were talking today when we pre pre show we were talking about the fact about who it affects and those yep. numbers are about, uh, given by the uh, the UN actually this year stated that about four hundred thirty eight thousand people die have died, uh, uh, which is actually a much lower number than was originally um, um, estimated from the years before, which is great, which means things are, are, are moving forward. But the staggering number is that 3.2 billion people are actually affected by the disease. And these people that are, are dying are what? Mostly these people, I mean, are children who are most susceptible and pregnant women, which, uh, you know, Obviously, uh, you know, that is the crux of, of building successful societies or healthy, productive women and a new generation of, of people coming into the society that are going to be productive. And this death rate for, the, you know, the weakest among us is unacceptable. It's entirely preventable. And uh, it takes a dedicated effort and groups of people to be diligent in um, doing the work necessary to protect people from mosquitoes, whether it be treating the water, um, sleeping under nets, spraying, uh, you know, all of these things are, we know that um, if you do all of these things, we can beat this disease and we can so, stop malaria. So, so Goodbye Malaria basically does what? What does, what do you do? What's, let's say, what's your program when you, when you walk into what, a, a village? Uh, a, yeah, an so area? Goodbye what? Malaria is a multifaceted ent entity. So on the one hand, in southern Mozambique, we're going out day in and day out, and we are um, spraying. We use indoor residual spraying. It's called IRS, and we um, work with local communities. Um, we let them know we're coming in. We remove everything from their homes. We spray their homes, and that's good for being protected for about six months. So we need to do the spray programs twice per year um, in each home. So we have a group of people that we employ 
We train. We run it like a business. Um, they go through a boot camp, a, a six-plus week training process. They become part of our team. And every day, day in and day out, in a very respectful way, we go out and we, we spray and protect people's homes. So that's the core aspect of what Goodbye Malaria is about, training and going out and working with local public health officials and, and the local government agency. But we do the work on the ground to provide the um, spraying. On top of that, we go into these communities and we say, how can we employ these people? How can we get money into the system? And we've developed a brand called Goodbye Malaria, and you can go to goodbyemalaria.com and read up more about it. And we're developing products that are exciting, that you'd love to buy. We're not a charity. We're actually selling products that we think are beautiful and that you can use in your everyday life. And the money goes all to our on-the-ground malaria efforts. And as part of this production of products, the criteria is can relatively unskilled people make these products and on their own sort of time. So, Adrian, you can't see it right now, but Adrian's holding a little teddy bear that we make. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, I don't know if it makes, that kind of it makes that sound. Doesn't it make that sound? Oh, so it's a dog. The, okay, I, that's the right. idea of the teddy bear Hello. is... Hello, teddy bear. Can we get a photo of the teddy bear yeah, tweeted? Me and the, me and the, uh, the, we'll tweet the teddy bear. Ethan, could you tweet the teddy bear for us? We'll, tweet, we'll tweet it out. Ethan's going to tweet the 20. The okay, 20. So Adrian, I'm not going to miss Adrian that. Looks, Adrian looks very <laughs> cute with the teddy, teddy bear. But one of our, um, our taglines is save a life in your sleep. And mosquitoes bite at night. Night is really the dangerous time when you're sleeping. It's like if a you're vampire. Not protected, like a vampire. <laughs> and uh, the mosquitoes get you at night. So our whole philosophy was we built our first series of products around this notion of of being protected while you sleep. So we have pajama pants, we have the teddy bear. A lot of children, as you know, go to sleep with their favorite teddy bear. And this teddy bear has a rich story. So these teddy bears are created by pieces of fabric that are embroidered. Women from a cooperative in Cape Town come into the office and they receive the little patches and they, um, on their own time, when they can fit it into their busy schedules, because most of these are grandmas who are taking care of their grandchildren because their children have passed away from from AIDS, which is an, another big problem in Southern Africa. And then we give them fair wage, more than a fair wage, for each piece that they embroider. They bring those embroidered pieces back to our facility and these pieces get put together and sewn together and they end up being a complete teddy bear. Now the economic impact of this money going into these communities and these townships is incredible. I mean, we've heard stories of women who do nothing but embroider these patches who are now putting their children through university, enabling their next generation of children to have educations, which is just critical to future um, economic development in Africa. So that's one product that we developed. We have a, a bracelet that's also made in senior citizen type cooperatives where people come every day. They, they receive breakfast and lunch and they have a real community um, um, sort of atmosphere and they, they make these bracelets and receive money for making the bracelets. And then a portion of the proceeds go to our malaria work. They go to the community center and they go to creating a sustainable um, product pipeline so many years into the future, these will all be self-sustaining activities, which will provide the monies necessary for spraying, nets, drugs, testing, um, cleaning of water, and all those kinds of things you need to eradicate malaria. You know, I mean, you said something a minute ago, which was about um, the economy, because I think that's one of the other issues. And, and, and in a minute, we're going to bring on one of your CEO who's actually in, in South Africa. Is that right? Yes, I'm going to try to get him to uh, respond here. They're having a big storm in Johannesburg oh, tonight. Yeah. Okay, uh, he's going to be calling in in, in, a, in a second uh, to the sh to the radio show. So we'll uh, we'll look out for that, right, Ethan? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, Ethan's uh, excited about it. Um, <laughs> I love Ethan Detmeyer. <laughs> Nobody says that he didn't. He didn't there's I'm no, doing three things at once. I know I'm you sorry. are. I know you. Are. I'm just. I'm giving him. I always like to give Ethan grief. It's well, it's part of the show. It's I'm going to make sure he buys a pair of PJs so he can save a life in his sleep tonight. <laughs> but I mean, these PJs. The, the interesting thing about them, um, and going back to what we were talking about before, was the the economic impact that it has in a village. Because we know from our uh, association with uh, Wells Bring Hope in Niger, West Africa. That you know, when the peace fund was realizing what was going on there, was the fact that, it, that these kids uh, and parents and that have to walk twenty miles for, to get fresh water, 
and that water might be and the stagnant water that's sitting there is actually infected with as you said uh, or bad diseases uh, right. that, that these kids are picking up as well as it's a, a, an infestation of um, of mosquitoes so there's there's things in both those areas but we realize that the economic impact of it is very important because that means people kids can go to school parents can go to work we, we were talking about yeah. the gdp uh, so i'll give you an idea so we're entrepreneurs and business people so we have a big vision of building something big but in order to build something big you've got to start at the bottom, right? You've got to start with whether it's one unit, one product, whatever it is. So the big picture is that there's a $12 billion GDP loss in Africa due specifically to malaria. Can you imagine $12 billion? The impact of $12 billion in Africa is just monumental. So we've taken that back to, you know, the ground, to the grassroots and said, okay, how can we make just a little difference and what we're doing is going into these small communities um, working with the creative people there who by the way who want to work Um, Africans want to be their own solution I mean nobody wants handouts people want to be challenged people want to be creative people want to work for a fair wage and provide for their families. God, I wish that was. I wish that was more. More uh, the world that we live in, actually, because a lot of the time people do expect handouts, and that is not productive in any in any way, or state or form. It's or not productive. And if you go to these villages in in anywhere in Africa, people want an opportunity to express their creativity, to be entrepreneurs, and to work. That's why micro loans, as an example has been just a flourishing um, genius yeah, activity. That's right, yeah. And so what we're doing is what is we're developing and designing products and then finding people who need to work who can make these products without a whole lot of skills. Mm-hmm. So we can give basic training and mentorship, but um, these are basic skills, fantastic products, and the amount of money that's coming into these communities is significant. I mean, on these Goodbye Malaria bracelets. Yeah, you got I one mean, here. In, in a, we'll actually have some photos of these uh, for you to take a look at. They're really cool, actually. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars have been moved into malaria efforts and other charities. Um, Relate um, organization who we partner with on these bracelets has sold millions and millions of these bracelets. Really? First of all, where do they sell them? All over the world. I mean, uh, you know, we've, they've done partnerships with all kinds of brands uh, you, who um, create bracelets with their own logos on them. We have a Goodbye Malaria um, bracelet, which we're sending all the proceeds to our malaria efforts. But you have this Save the Rhino bracelet and the Save the Whale mm-hmm. bracelet and a HIV AIDS bracelet. I mean, so the uh, United Methodist Church uh, did a custom bracelet for their initiatives. So, you know, they're making bracelets day in and day out by the thousands and employing dozens and dozens of people in the poorest townships in Cape Town called Kayalicha. And the economic um, benefit is remarkable. If you just go down there and you see what's happening, it's really incredible. Well, it looks like we've got a call here. Hello. This is uh, Sherwin Charles, who's Hi. our uh, manager, and uh, he, he runs the whole show, basically, and he's calling in from uh, Johannesburg. This Sherwin, evening. good morning, good afternoon, good evening. evening what, 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 is it evening your time? It's good evening. It's uh, past eight in the evening. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. I hear that you have a storm down there. Exactly. So uh, the, the the line may not be perfect, but um, I have a colleague from from Nando's with me, and we're on the pavement in a in a trendy part of town. <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about, we've been talking with David this morning about uh, Goodbye Malaria, about what's going on. Um, you're the CEO, you're on the ground there. Um, tell us a little bit about the, some of the townships or the, or, the, uh, or the places or the towns that you go into the villages and what, the, what is the, the process and the economic um, um, impact that, that happens when you, when you go into these places. Well, I mean, we, we, we do a lot of our work in um, petty urban and rural areas in Mozambique. Uh, if you may recall, uh, just a couple of years ago, Mozambique was considered probably the third poorest country in the world. So you can imagine the environments in which our team have to work in. Um, we, do, we do our spray program, which is indoor residual spraying to control malaria and the mosquitoes within the area, 
Um, that starts in September every year. September being the our spring, and and you get to temperatures of around 40, 40 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in in Fahrenheit. I would think it's the high 80s and 90s. Um, yes. And and so our team go out into the rural areas uh, with protective gear to basically protect the homes and protect the lives. Um, of those in those areas from the deadly malaria disease. Um, it's a program that would normally run between four or five months uh, for us to cover the whole district. Uh, it's very poor income areas. Um, in each district, you'll probably find one area that's a town, uh, a, little, a little bit bigger than a village, where the economic activity is normally centered around. So- um, what we found is the impact in those areas is when a, when, a, when a malaria program is successful, you're basically limiting the family's income for healthcare expenses. And typically, malaria consumes around about 25% of the family's annual income. That's so amazing. An- annual, a- you said annual income, family. right? You said an- yes, annual income. Thank you, right. So, so if you work it out, it's a massive number on the family's budget in, in Mozambique. So when you deal with malaria effectively, you basically raise the GDP two or three points uh, in that community because the family has more disposable income to spend on education, to spend on clothing, to spend on airtime for their cell phones. How, and, ma- how many... And, I mean, certainly... Sorry? How many how many teams do you have, and how many villages have you serviced? So, so currently in Mozambique, we looked after two districts uh, that would comprise of our teams of about 150 people, um, broken up into teams of five. Um, we've protected the lives of about 250,000 people thus far. Our plan for 2016 is to double that. So we're looking at doing um, 500,000 people uh, with probably 400 staff. Um, and it really is thanks to Nando's who uh, from the UK have agreed to to sponsor an extra district this year. Well, well tell them, when, when, I, when, I used to do, when I used to be in Europe, I used to know Nando's very well. And prior to me becoming a pescatarian, I used to eat it. it was, <laughs> I, I love spicy stuff, so Nando's was delicious. Um, <clears throat> but um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, but um, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is, when you talk about the GDP of an area, what, what, what is that impact? I mean, let's just talk a little bit about that impact, because I think, you know, we on the West, we talk about GDP. Well, it's a, you know, it's a walk to the grocery store for some people. What does it mean to people, yes. you know, in, in poor countries like Mozambique? So, so if you t- take that uh, average family's income is about $50 a month, right? That, that would be around, um, say, six $700 a year mm-hmm. is the income of a family, and malaria would consume about $150 of that. Right. So, you know, if you work out the mathematics, that's a massive part of your income. And I mean, the, the, that $150 can send uh, kids in a family to school, to a private school. Oh, you absolutely. Know, and, uh, and oh, no, absolutely. The, the, the challenge you face within these areas is a family's income and, and, and their expenses is, is either or. You know, when we make a decision is, do I go to a store and buy some milk and then put, put gas in my car? Mm-hmm. In, in these communities, it's do I put gas in my car or do I go and buy milk? You have one or the other. Mm-hmm. So when malaria is the choice that, that you've got to spend your money on and, and it's saving your kid's life, that's first priority. And normally the family then has to give up on, on something quite important in their lives. And what we've seen is the difference in productivity because now a mom doesn't have to stay at home to tend for a sick kid she can be out in the field being productive. So the impact on the family with, with, with malaria under control is probably increasing the family's income from $600 a year to probably $800 a year. Mm-hmm. So it's a massive difference in their lives. Wait, 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 I, 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 
can't even sometimes fathom eight hundred dollars for a year. I mean, people here where you have it a week or two or, or for two weeks work. That's that's eight hundred dollars for some people, but for a year, it's it's kind of astounding, really, when you, you you think about it. When we're sitting here in a privileged environment, we're in Los Angeles. You know, part of us are today, and you think about in those terms what l- very little. Um, initiatives and how big they are in people's lives and not only what you sort of what Sherwin is alluding to is when you get a malaria under control all of a sudden private enterprise is willing to invest in these communities because when you're investing in these communities and malaria is a huge problem you have sick many sick days which are not affordable you also have high health care costs and you're nervous to invest in those communities. With malaria under control, businesses are coming in, providing more opportunity for employment. Now, I know, I know Sherwin, that, that uh, your time's limited. I know we, we, I don't want to sp- keep you too long from calling from South Africa. But uh, one question I have, I know that um, you know, there are m- mostly 80% of the estimated malaria cases occur in about 15 countries. And two of them are, most of them, I believe, are actually in, in Africa. Uh, Nigerian Dem- Democratic Republic of Congo are, are two of the other larger uh, uh, places that ha- have large cases of it. Are you planning on, on expanding your, you, you mentioned you want to double your, your efforts this year. Are you expanding into another country? Are you expanding more into just Mozambique this year? What, what, is, what, are, what are your goals for the future? So the strategy for malaria is to say, how do we get the disease under control? And the idea is that we want to roll back malaria from the south up towards Nigeria. So sub-Saharan Africa has got 80% of the world's malaria cases and 80% of the deaths in malaria occur in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria, as you said, DRC and Mozambique are considered the three countries in ICU. So... That's where our focus is right now because Mozambique has a massive impact on Swaziland and South Africa because obviously mosquitoes and malaria don't understand that there are borders <laughs> between countries. So they travel quite easily across those borders. You mean they don't have a so passport? Have... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there's no issue of immigrants. There's them. no illegal immigrants <laughs> in that case. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, so what we find is that, is that if we roll the disease and get elimination to start at the southern tip of Africa and we roll it up the continent, we'll then be sorting out everything from the south going up. So that's why we started in Mozambique and that's why we started in southern Mozambique. We make a difference in South Africa, we make a difference in Swaziland, and then our idea is certainly to go all the way up to DRC. At the same time, we have colleagues... And, and other uh, people invested in malaria looking at how do they come from the north down. So coming from the Sahara Desert, pushing the disease down back towards Central Africa. And that's kind of the global plan to deal with malaria, is to push it from both ends until you get a very small sliver in the middle that one needs to deal with. Yeah, but sh- how do you eradicate the disease? Because obviously it comes from a mosquito, how do you eradicate the actual disease yeah. itself? I mean, there's the, the other thing. I mean, you're spraying, which is stopping them from biting, but can, can, can it be eradicated yeah. at the base level? Absolutely. The, the, the amazing thing about malaria compared to cancer and HIV and AIDS and, and all the other uh, diseases is that, is that malaria can be defeated. So, so uh, there's medication, current medication on the market that will clear your blood of the malaria parasite in your blood. So, so that is totally possible. So when we talk about eliminating malaria and eradicating malaria, it's been done in Sri Lanka very recently. It's been done throughout the States, throughout Europe in the 60s and 70s. Um, there's been there's stories around the world of, of, of the disease being defeated. It's not a disease that one has to live with anymore. The, the, the tools are there to eliminate the disease. It takes just a disciplined implementation strategy that, that gets the work done. So part of the challenges for the African government and ministries of health, they're working in very tough conditions in rural areas. Logistics is a massive challenge. So we found that a partnership with the private sector, uh, together with a business mindset, we've been able to make um, a lot of progress in a short space of time. So certainly from, from our side, we, we fully, I mean, we believe in our lifetime 
malaria can be difficult. And it's all about execution and just diligence to the work of the ground and providing funding. So what's unique with what we're doing with Goodbye Malaria is we're committing to, to eradicating malaria in these uh, villages that we're active in, but we're also creating um, economic empowerment so that we can sustain this, so that governments aren't on the hook, and, chari- and, and we're not requiring only donations to keep the work going. So our idea is to develop sort of a brand that is dedicated to fighting malaria, that are bringing people products from people who need the work, and the money going back into the communities and going back into malaria fighting. So... Well, Sherman, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I think uh, uh, David will uh, continue the, the fight at this end, but uh, I congratulate you on your efforts, and uh, I, I wish you much success into uh, reaching those numbers that you quoted earlier on. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to all your listeners who support Goodbye Malaria. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherman. Thank you for joining us. Uh, take care, Sherman. Uh, bye. So, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier on, where does malaria come from? Interesting fact, the word malaria comes from the Italian malaria, meaning mala aria. Aria means air. In the 18th century, Romans thought that malaria was caused from breathing in bad air in marshy areas. In 1880, scientists discovered that this was not true, but the name stuck. So, that's where it actually comes from, mal- mala aria. Ma- ma- it's, it's Italians. Well, you it's a Italian, country. you should. It's you. a my country. It's a my, yeah. Um, <clears throat> You're just showing us how smart you are. That's what I like to do. I like to show you. <laughs> well, actually, we actually do have World Malaria Day coming up on April 25th as well. Um, uh, ha- for half the world, every day is Malaria Day. It's a day to keep up the fight against the, the killer disease, but we do have World Malaria Day on well, It's on, coming uh, up on April 25th. 25th. There are a whole lot of global events planned. Um, obviously, what we want to do is we want to get people um, to party in their people. PJs, you know, get your Goodbye Malaria PJs, have a disco party, have some fun, chill around the house, um, think about how lucky you have it, and uh, think about how great it is that some of this money, is, uh, most of this money is going towards uh, fighting malaria on the ground in Mozambique. So we're, we're taking a very positive outlook at this. We want to celebrate African ingenuity and creativity and entrepreneurship, and we want to create mechanisms for fighting malaria to be so self-sustaining and not require handouts all right let's get to our hero of the week uh we'll come back a little bit more about that in the second john uh john david we'll have john on in a second john are you there Bring- i am i am so uh tell us a little bit about our hero of the week and well, uh, every um Every week on Peace Fund Radio, we bring you the hero of the week, a young person who is doing something amazing for other young people. Today's hero of the week is Kritika Singh. She founded an organization called Malaria Free World at malariafreeworld.org. Their motto is, together we can end malaria worldwide. And Kritika is joining us to let us know how they are going about that. And we are bringing her on as we speak. So we'll uh, we'll bring her on actually right now. Uh, while we're doing that, uh, another interesting fact that uh, some of you might not have known. I, li- I like these facts in the morning because they actually gives you factoids. Originally known as the Communicable Disease Center, the CDC was formed to fight malaria. Did you know that? It replaced the Office of Malaria Control in war areas, a, a World War II era agency that did exactly what you'd expect. The CDC was headquartered in Atlanta rather than Washington, D.C., because the South faced the worst threat from malaria. And after a series of name changes, the CDC eventually became known as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So that's what they were originally formed for. I do, did not know that. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I believe we have Kritika on. Kritika, are, uh, do, we, do we have you online? Hi, yeah, I'm right here. Good morning, Kritika. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Where, where are you? I'm, I'm actually not bad, actually, this morning. Thank you for asking. Um, where are you calling from this morning? So I'm actually calling from Virginia. I'm uh, sitting in the library of my high school, Thomas Jefferson. Um, we just had a tornado warning, so I just oh, ran back in here. You ran back? Okay. Hopefully you're okay there. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, it was just a drill. Okay. <laughs> it was a drill. Okay, that's good. How old are you, Critic? I think you're 18, aren't you? Uh, yes, I'm 18. See, I know all the facts about you. <laughs> um, when did you first learn about malaria? So actually, um, it's an interesting story. My parents are both from India, so I grew up like hearing about malaria and how my mom had it every year. 
Uh, but I never really realized how much of a problem it was until about two years ago. I was um, 16 and working at a pharmaceutical company. I was doing a summer internship there, and um, I was d- working on malaria research, and that's when I first kind of started getting into malaria. So, so tell me, what, what is malaria research? What, 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 what did you have to do? What were you, what were you looking at? So I was actually studying uh, malaria is caused by the parasite Plasmodium. So uh, the company I was working at, they have this amazing mechanism for fighting cancer, and they wanted to see if that mechanism could be used for malaria as well. So my job was to basically test the drugs they had on enzymes that were found in the malaria parasite. And so it was basically just a lot of wet lab research. Um, And then while I was researching for it, actually, I um, had to write a lot of grant applications to get more funding for the project. So that's when I studied um, the background of malaria. I got like all these statistics about how a child dies every minute, which is now 90 every 90 seconds. Um, Two years ago was every minute. Um, And then I realized how half the world's population is at risk. So that's kind of how my whole life has now become malaria because of that one summer. Well, it's it's interesting. You mentioned that uh, a couple of years ago, it was once a minute and we actually had some mm-hmm. of that in our uh, in our information and now we realize that 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 number has gone down because of organizations like yourself and like uh, um our, our esteemable guest this morning my friend david stern good morning let's say uh, david's in here from goodbye malaria as well so there's two different organizations in this uh, in the studio today tell me a little bit about why you inspired uh, malaria free world Yeah, so Malaria Free World, uh, the original goal of it was to raise awareness about malaria research and to get kids excited about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and to get them interested in going into diseases like malaria. Because, um, so I I live in Virginia, but I was up in Boston doing this internship, and I used to call my friends back home and talk to them about my work. And a lot of them were doing cancer research or Alzheimer's research. um, And they were just like, Kritika, why are you wasting your time on a disease that doesn't matter? So I realized that there's this huge gap in understanding for our generation particularly because we don't see infectious diseases as a huge threat because they don't affect us directly. Right, exactly. So that's why I started Malaria Free World. Just to, We originally went to middle schools and elementary schools and got kids excited about malaria. We told them how it's caused by mosquitoes. They were interested in learning about the mosquitoes and how um, originally I thought that it was a, a disease um, that mostly affects children. So I think it's fitting that we're a group of teenagers who are fighting it. So, so tell me, your, your mission statement is, is, is what exactly? So our mission statement is to raise awareness about the malaria epidemic uh, while fostering scientific innovation for young aspiring scientists. Um, and now we've, we're kind of amending it a little bit because we've gone international. So now we're also adding on um, to help empower students in other countries to become champions for malaria eradication and help fight it in their own communities. Wow, that's very impressive. Uh, this is David Stern here. So I'm with Hi. Goodbye Malaria. And we actually, part of our benefactors and, and founders of our initiatives is a restaurant chain called Nando's, which are quite big uh-huh. in your area. <laughs> yeah, they are. And, and um, so we'd love to connect with you at some point because, you know, we're working on the ground and uh, and uh, developing strategies on the ground to prevent malaria. And you guys, you're it's incredible that you're out there um, promoting awareness in a country that doesn't seem to be impacted by malaria. They don't perceive malaria as a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Now with the Zika virus, people are realizing that mosquitoes are bad things. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So I guess it's not good to say that Zika is a good thing, but it is a good thing for malaria because we're getting a lot more awareness out because when I started malaria free world, it was before Ebola too. So that's when a lot of the infectious disease talk has started around Ebola and around Zika. Now, you also had a Malaria Meltdown Expo. What, what, what exactly is that? So Malaria Meltdown was our first event. Uh, it was kind of our um, inaugural gala, you could say. Um, we basically uh, structured it like a symposium. So in the morning, we had a lot of really fun clubs and activities. Um, so I go to Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, and here we have a lot of different science-based clubs. And so we had a lot of them come out and do really cool experiments. Like we had DNA extraction from bananas and strawberries um, for the malaria-free world, kind of malaria awareness side. 
we modeled how the plasmodium parasite moves in your blood. And we did that with like gummy worms coated with uh, baking soda and vinegar. So it's kind of that's how it actually models in the blood. So we did all these cool activities, hands-on, interactive STEM activities to get kids interested. Um, then in the evening portion or the afternoon portion of it, we had um, some speakers come. We had um, my mentor from the Harvard Medical School. Um, we had some researchers from Johns Hopkins. Uh, there's a vaccine company in Rockville, Maryland called Scenaria. Um, they focus on a sporozoite vaccine, which is basically um, the skin stage of malaria. So we had one of their um, researchers come and give a talk about current vaccine studies. And I think it was really good because we had some advocacy. Uh, we had research and we had um, the public awareness aspect of it, which is basically what we do. We do all three. So it was an overview of what we aim to do as an organization. And that was what, November 2014. So we've gotten a long way since then. <laughs> I think you've gone, gone, gone a long way in two years because you started this when you were 16, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and <clears throat> I think you should be running for president or something yeah. at the moment. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the race right now is rather rather upsetting. Yeah, maybe I can just declare candidacy now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You've got, a couple of other, you've got a couple of other programs called Malaria Matters and Malaria Masters. What, what, what are these exactly? So, yeah, Malaria Matters and Malaria Masters. We also have a newest one called Students for Global Health. So um, Malaria Matters is basically just our blog. We publish it all, a lot of um, news information about malaria. And uh, as part of Malaria Matters, we've started Students for Global Health, which is basically we invite kids, even if they're not interested, particularly in malaria, but if they're interested in another infectious disease or global health problem, they can write for our blog about that, and they can have a discussion about that through their following on social media. Because as millennials, we've realized the power of social media, so we're really trying to grasp that. Uh, for Malaria Masters, it's our outreach program, which is we invite students um, and researchers from all over the world to basically join our organization and be in charge of their own Malaria Free World branch, and they'll be the Malaria Master of that area. So, for example, we have a lot of different Malaria Masters in schools, uh, in local schools, where they invite us to come give talks about malaria. They fundraise for us. Um, and then we also have some Malaria Masters internationally who conduct events on their own and they raise money internationally for their own events in those areas so we have one of our best malaria masters is actually in goa india and what he does is he is in goa he's a postdoc researcher there um, and he researches uh, malaria and so what he does is he does annual events or not annual he does events once in a while um, in his area in his school where he used to go um, just to get kids excited about malaria in a place where they're actually impacted by a lot because in Goa, India, they actually have a lot of malaria. So it's just that empowering of those um, people who want to join our organization. We provide them with all the materials that they would need to conduct an event, um, PowerPoints, T-shirts. We do a lot of tattoos, like cool stuff for kids, um, crosswords, and everything like that. And we give them the support that they would need to do their own event. Are you sure you're 18? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Okay. Um, and critically, you I wish I'd done that much when I was 18. Just sleeping a lot less than we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is true. I don't sleep that much. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, see, that was right. Um, you, so you mentioned India. You you you've been to India. You, what was uh, this, you went last year? I believe wasn't it? Yeah, I actually went in August. Um, I was uh, there actually for my cousin's wedding, and I thought since I'm already in India, I'm going to do some events there. So uh, we used all the funding we got from uh, the year last year, and we put it into our events. There, there was a, a wide mix. We had um, some that we did in Delhi, which is the capital where I'm from, um, where we went and talked to a lot of private schools and nice schools. I went to the school where my parents went, um, and I talked to them about malaria. They all knew about it, which was great, and they knew how to prevent it, which was even better. And they were very interested in learning about the research aspects of how they as high schoolers in India could get research opportunities like I had had in the United States. Uh, but I also had the opportunity to go to um, some really, really rural villages uh, where students don't even have enough money to get clothing or to eat properly. So we actually, with our funding, we brought them on Malaria Free World t-shirts and uh, we gave them lunch and everything. And I talked to them about malaria. And I realized that they weren't, they didn't really care about malaria because they had so many other things that they were caring more about. So I made it more of an interactive discussion more than just me talking at them. Uh, I asked them about how they had been impacted by malaria, um, like 
And a lot of them had so many questions about why your like bug bite swells up. Why does that happen? So it was really, really interesting and like eye opening for me to talk to them and to convey to them the things that I needed to, like the three major things to fight malaria, uh, take preventative medication, sleep under bed nets, and make sure there's no standing water um, or no dirty standing water. Um, and so I conveyed those three to them by having this discussion and by getting them involved and answering their questions of why mosquitoes swell up. And actually, I had to do that presentation completely in Hindi. So it was the first time for me doing that. And it was just really, really great to have that sort of event surrounding our first anniversary. What do you, what do you think is the biggest step the world can take to stop it? I think um, there's no one biggest step. There's, I think there's three major things that really, really people can do. One is funding. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles in malaria eradication right now is that we don't get enough funding for our efforts. Um, the second thing is that the more people know who know about malaria, the more people will care about it, and the more people will actually try to prevent it in their own communities. Um, and the third thing is that the government really needs to be involved. Um, I was actually at Capitol Hill last week. I was lobbying um, senators and congressmen to increase the budget for the president's malaria initiative, and they work in around 17 countries um, in Africa, and they're trying to expand the Thailand-Cambodia border where resistance is emerging right now. So if the government is involved and we get um, our government in the United States to collaborate with governments abroad um, who don't have the infrastructure that we have to do malaria eradication programs, that's the third biggest thing, to just get out there and talk to your congressmen and senators and get them involved in malaria eradication. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We were in D.C. last week as well, and we heard news that President Obama has requested an additional two to three hundred million. Two hundred million, million. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred million dollars in uh, the president's malaria initiative, which is incredible. Yep, exactly. we'll see. We'll see if uh, Congress approves the budget, which we hope, I really uh, hope so. <laughs> they will. But, um, you know, they, they do a very good job uh, fighting malaria around the globe and um, innovating as well. Mm-hmm. Well, Critica, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. You are this week's Peace Fund Hero of the Week. Congratulations. Um, congratulations. <laughs> and you. congratulations on Malaria Free World. We will hook you up with uh, Goodbye Mal- Malaria and David because uh, I'm sure he has a bunch of questions and ways th- you guys, yeah, you, you guys could possibly work together. Fantastic. I look forward to uh, connecting with you. All right. Me too, yeah. Critica, thank you so much, and I'll let you get back to your um, your um, uh, tornado warning. Um. <laughs> thank you so much, and thanks for having me. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, she's impressive. What What were we doing at 18 years old? That's what I want to know. Like, not that. Not I was that. 16. I was, my summer job was mowing mowing yards around <laughs> the neighborhood, and she's... <laughs> I, I was playing soccer. <laughs> she's at a pharmaceutical <laughs> company uh, tackling tackling malaria. It's incredible. It's Fantastic. incredible. And what I love about her story is, you know, she was originally told that, well, malaria is not important. And how many of our heroes of the week have started what they've done because, you know, some because they they knew something about a children's issue that other people were ignoring or didn't understand and they moved forward with it and followed through and now they're doing great things around the world i love these stories yeah and the fascinating thing is you know when you realize how important it is to people's lives but it might not impact your direct community that's what i find really impressive about her is she's not directly affected by malaria but realizes that the world is and has decided to do something about it in the richest country on earth that can actually you know um send funds and, and, and materials and people um, to help combat but the problem. But what you said earlier on, which I think is very, very important, is what the Peace Fund is actually doing uh, all the time is the fact that we're not giving money out. We're not, it, we're, it's a helping hand, not, right. not a handout. And I think that's very important because that's what you have to do when you go into villages like that. You have to be able to give people the tools to do it, but they have to be able to do it themselves because at that point, then they're much more inspired to actually move forward. Yeah, so I'll give you an example of how we approached it with a private sector program. Is we realize if we increase uh, economies and we get people out of poverty, they're obviously going to buy more products. So our partners are people like Coca-Cola, uh, Qualcomm, Microsoft. I mean, people that you're going to sell more cell phones to people that have money to buy cell phones. You're going to sell right. more Coca-Colas and uh, more chicken sandwiches or whatever the case <laughs> might be. So there's self-interest at work as well because you want to, you know, bring people out of poverty so they become consumers but at the heart you know you want to save lives you want to make people's lives better and um, you got to figure out uh, an entrepreneurial sustainable way to do that and it's not a handout right people want to work well well you've got these products we're going to show them out online you can actually go and see goodbye malaria goodbye malaria.com uh what's his name again that's a mashozi bear we Mishosi named bear we named that bear for one of uh 
a, the wife of one of our, our founders and heroes, a Kingsley Holgate, who's one of the biggest uh, explorers in Africa, and his wife passed away a couple of years ago, and we named the bear after her because she was an ultimate African. Well, uh, David, thank you for uh, joining oh, us this for morning. Us. Um, uh, uh, John, do you have any other updates for us? Very quickly, we have a minute left on the show. Very quickly, you can check out our previous Hero of the Week, Alessandro Loria of the Malaria Defense Project at malariadefenseproject.org. He has donated thousands of mosquito nets to, uh, to children uh, throughout Africa. Uh, go to gofundme.com slash Ninth Street Hope to read about something that our previous Hero of the Week, Sean, Ethan's daughter, is doing for the kids yeah, at the Ninth this is Street School yeah. in, uh, in Los Angeles. Follow Adrian on Twitter at AdrianPaul1, Ethan at Combat Radio. Uh, goodmybillarea.com is uh, is David's site. David, thank you for being on the show today. And also, if you'd like to support the Peace Fund, you can go to thepeacefund.org. Donations of $250 or more will get you on the air. We will, uh, we will read your dedication on the air for... Uh, dedicated to a loved one, dedicated to a friend, in memory of someone special, uh, thepeacefund.org. Okay, thank you, John, and uh, thank you for everybody for listening this morning. We will bring you more interesting information, obviously. Next week, we have a couple of other interesting guests. We're going to be talking about Cambodia next week and uh, our School Makes a Difference program with Carmel McPherson, who was actually there uh, in Cambodia uh, with the Peace Fund. Uh, in closing, of course, we always close with a quote. quote this week is by Robbie Brosen, co-founder of Goodbye Malaria and founder of Nando's. We are creating a win-win-win situation, providing African solutions to African challenges where Africa is doing it for herself. This is Adrian Paul and Ethan Detmeyer. We'll see you next week. You're listening to Peace Fund Radio with Ethan Denmeyer and Adrian Paul, right here on LA Talk Radio.